China is building an artificial sun that could power the Earth. Here's what you need to know. China is creating an artificial star that burns at temperatures eight times hotter than our sun by replicating its energy-generating hydrogen fusion process on Earth, according to Science Alert. The sun's heat ensures hydrogen nuclei move at high speeds and its mass and gravity limit the space available, inducing collisions which generate massive amounts of energy, according to the International Atomic Energy Agency. The experimental advanced superconducting tokamak and hefei China works by recreating these conditions using magnetic coils to hold superheated streams of hydrogen plasma in place, according to Science Alert. One Zero explains that once the hydrogen is floating inside the magnetized chamber, it's showered with an electromagnetic current that strips the atoms from their electrons, forms a plasma, and then heats that plasma up. As China's star can't compress the resulting plasma to the same extent as the sun, the particles must be heated more to increase the chances of collisions. In May, it reached a record plasma temperature of 120 million degrees Celsius for 101 seconds. The scale of fusion's potential is clear, with the sun radiating more energy in one second than people have practiced since the beginning of time, according to a study in the Renewable and Sustainable Energy Reviews journal. Now, although other fusion projects like the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor do exist, and a team at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology is also working on a fusion power plant that it said in 2018 would be ready in 15 years, it appears China is furthest ahead in attempting to reach that potential. Of course, huge challenges remain. China's model is still not close to producing a net positive of energy, according to One Zero, meaning it cannot yet get more energy out of the reaction than it spends starting and sustaining it. Plus, there are significant upcoming issues with sourcing the two types of hydrogen that fusion relies on, with deuterium found in seawater but tritium extremely rare on Earth. However, answers appear to be incoming. One Zero suggests scientists could eventually use the helium-3 isotope as an alternative fuel, mining it either from the moon or asteroids out in space, and the potential benefits of success are massive. First, experts suggest just one liter of seawater could produce the energy equivalent of two barrels of gasoline if fusion reactors can be made to work. Second, fusion reactors generate almost no waste, and any waste they do produce can be recycled into raw material for new reactions. The other 99% of material produced by fusion reactions is hot steam that converts into electricity via the use of turbines, becoming clean water once it cools off. Third, and finally, in the event of any malfunction, the ultra-hot plasma generated simply expands and cools off, turning into its harmless gas form, according to One Zero, which adds that even in the case of a leak mid-reaction, the plasma disperses into the atmosphere, which causes no harm thanks to dilution. For any doubters, this idea might seem fanciful right now, but it is far from China's only big energy concept. Having completed its construction in the Gobi Desert, for instance, China has just begun testing a thorium-powered molten salt nuclear reactor, according to France 24. Science journal Nature's website explains that these other ambitious reactors, where fuel is dissolved directly into the molten salt liquid core, may reduce the risk of explosive meltdowns because they operate at lower pressures. They also operate at higher temperatures than standard nuclear reactors, meaning they can produce electricity more efficiently, according to one nuclear engineer at MIT. Meanwhile, using thorium as the fuel is considered greener than using uranium because it doesn't create toxic plutonium, and because its radioactivity drops off to safe levels in hundreds rather than tens of thousands of years, according to NPR. Just as with fusion reactors, there are plenty of other issues proposed with thorium reactors. The Guardian quotes one anti-nuclear campaigner who says thorium does produce dangerous, long-lasting waste products such as iodine-129, which has a half-life of up to 15.7 million years. And it also produces uranium-233, which emits radiation stronger than that of the other isotopes, so you have to be more careful, according to the nuclear reactor technology specialist at the University of Pisa who spoke to France 24. But what seems clear regardless is that China is pushing forward new kinds of technology with a clear-sighted ambition that it is far harder to find within the confines of risk-averse, corporate-led markets. While leading companies in the US and the UK go in postmodern technological circles, reinventing derivative models of derivative models of products no one needs, China proves once again to be the place to look for evidence of what anthropologist David Graeber described as poetic technologies the use of rational and technical means to bring wild fantasies to reality. 
That is, China proves once again to be the place where these kinds of ideas are being given a real chance through a combination of proper funding and proper coordination. The latest iteration of that, its artificial star, begins to project a vision of future energy provision that is a totally different paradigm to anything we have now. If it's more into the world of Dyson spheres than iPhone 13s, opening up new frames of reference for what's possible and what's not. It seems pretty obvious that once you start talking about artificial suns, you stop thinking about 3D TVs and start thinking about stuff like the Kardashev scale, for instance. Type 1 on that scale, according to SciTech Daily, is a species that can harness all the energy received on the planet from a neighboring star. To enter even this category, according to Futurism, humans would need to boost our current energy production over 100,000 times. Type 2 on the scale would involve not just transforming starlight into energy, but controlling the star itself, which is where the original concept for the Dyson Sphere kicks in. Type 3 civilizations would be able to travel across galaxies with knowledge of everything related to energy, turning them into a godlike master race. The point here is that these ideas exist in the realm of pure fantasy, but you only get to interesting new futures by thinking about new things and asking new questions. And it's self-evident that, technologically, China is the country asking the cooler questions right now. Researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology working with a newly formed private company say they will build a working fusion power plant in 15 years thanks to a new superconducting material that recently became commercially available. The material is a new superconducting steel tape coated with a yttrium barium copper oxide. The team, working with MIT spin-off Commonwealth Fusion Systems, plans to use the tape to make smaller, more powerful magnets that can be used in fusion reactors. The new magnets will double the magnetic field of a fusion reactor, which means more power can be produced with a smaller device. The smaller size will reduce costs and complexity, making future fusion power plants easier to construct. Launched in late 2012, Japan's spacecraft Hayabusa 2 was sent to investigate asteroid Ryugu by lobbing a copper shell into the space rock. Japan's space agency JAXA published the probe's findings in the journal Science on March 19. According to JAXA, the Hayabusa is 0.6 meters across the front, 0.4 meters from prow to stern, and has four ion thrusters. The spacecraft is equipped with X and Ka band antennas for communication, and its sensors include optics, lidar, and spectrometers. According to the study, the small carry-on impactor shell blasted a semicircular crater 14 meters wide and 0.6 meters deep, with the shock apparently absorbed by boulders. This confirms that Ryugu is indeed a rubble pile or boulders loosely held together by sandy materials. The impact experiment suggests the most ancient materials of the asteroid are up to 4.6 billion years old, but the substance coalesced with other asteroids' remains only 10 million years ago to form Ryugu. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.